Okay, so let's take a look again. Okay, so we've got two, four, six, eight. Okay, so we need to have. Uh, let's be a little tricky, but we can do it. Okay, so right now we've got 16 spans on this, and uh, let's start with that and see where we can go. So maybe we don't need to up the resolution after all, but I have a feeling we might need to. I'm going to get rid of these faces here. And I'm going to use a tool now I think I've shown you already called Chamfer Vertex. If I haven't shown this, I can't quite remember. Basically what it does is it takes a vertice and turns it into a face. Okay, so looking at this piece one more time, we have this similar kind of feature that we have down here, repeated on this form. And the tricky part is going to be setting it up so that it doesn't scale in. You see how right now my edges are kind of tapering down here towards the middle. If I keep going, it goes all the way down to a spike. But on the model, that does not happen. It happens a little bit. And then we have this other piece here. So we can work on this piece, at least for right now. Extrude that out. Actually, it looks a little bit more delicate than that. So we'll do this out here like that. Bring this out. Looks like it goes in a little bit. I'm just doing extrudes. And then this bolt will be a separate piece. Um, what I like to do in this situation is uh, let me get rid of the history first. Oh, and you know what? We also have to save our work. So this is something that I should have done already, but um, whenever you're working, <laughs> just save your work all the time. Uh, sooner than I did. So I've already put, like, what, 25 minutes into this uh, particular model so far, and I haven't saved yet, so... It's a good thing I did. All right, let me delete history on that. So there's two things you can do in a situation like this. You can, uh, well, first off, let me say what you don't want to do. You don't want to leave it like this. Um, for the same reason we don't want to have triangles, we don't want to have any faces that have more than four sides whenever we can avoid it. So there's two ways to solve this. You can extrude. Oops, what's going on here? Okay. You can extrude that face in, like this, until your vertices are touching each other, and then you can fuse all those vertices together. But then you're left with this triangle type shape. So what you do at that point is begin deleting every other edge here, like this. Oops, I did that. See, I selected that wrong. And then you end up with all four-sided shapes. Uh, that's one solution. This would be merged. But the solution I'm going to do, I think, is a bit more elegant. OK, so back up a little bit. Get away from that extrude. OK. So what I like to do is I like to go into the split polygon tool and actually draw a grid in here. What I'll do is I'll start with the top to the bottom, then go from the left to the right and then I'll fill in two on each side just like that so you make kind of this waffle pattern and uh, you end up with more regular geometry and less of these so that's just my preference okay so let's go ahead and make that bolt really quick this looks like a five-sided cylinder so that's really easy to do Let's create a cylinder. I'll do a trick right now. Um, up till now I've been translating these into place. 
but remember if you hold down the V key you can snap. So I'm just going to snap that cylinder right onto this middle vertice here and then scale it down. So that's just a faster way for me to uh, move things around and it prevents me from having to zoom out and zoom in and all this other stuff. Okay, so I'm going to change the divisions. I know it's supposed to be uh, like a pentagon type cylinder. So I just punch in a 5. And I'm going to put a extra division on the cap and one along the height. So this is kind of buried in the kind of uh, well, it's hard to see because it's covered in paint here. But I'm looking at that connection point right here. And uh, I think in this case we could be fancy about it, but I'm just going to delete these faces here and just have it crash right through like that. Okay, so I'm going to double click these. And uh, this is tricky now because, you know, we model everything to smooth. So right now this is going to smooth out into this shape right here, uh, which makes sense based on what we have. But we want to prevent that. So what I need to do is bevel each of these edges. And uh, the way I'm going to do that, well, there's a couple of things we could do. The first choice or the first option we have is to select all those edges. And by the way, I just marquee selected these and converted them to an edge loop, which is right here. Got that on a hotkey. And then we can say bevel. So if you go to Edit Mesh, there's actually a tool that will do beveling for you. And it works, most of, most of the time it works pretty well. But you can sort of see what it does here. So it adds in those extra edges for you. And actually, I think this is going to work just fine. Uh, one thing to note though is that when it runs into a border edge it doesn't really know what to do and it will leave over these little faces here. So if I deselect these you can see that there's this little face hiding out and that's actually a little triangle and we don't want to leave that in there because when we smooth it it's going to do some funny stuff. You can see that it's trying to compensate for those little edges in there. So what I like to do is uh, when I know I'm beveling like this, I know I'm going to be creating those extra little triangles. There's a little tool here I've got called the triangle. Uh, check for n for non-quads. And what it'll do is it will go through your model and select anything that's not a quad face. So these are okay to leave here, I think. I'm going to deselect these and then just delete these. I'll crash that back through. And now when I smooth it, it's going to look like how we want. But is this the right scale? Let's see. This can be a bit bigger.